What is making eggs cost so much? Is it avian flu, inflation, or something else? Today's video is about thinking that you found something significant, being wrong, and then still finding something significant, I think. Follow me down this rabbit hole and see if you agree with me. In January of 2022, a new law went into effect in California requiring cage-free housing of chickens. Six other states voted for similar bans, including Colorado, Washington State, which went into effect on January 1st, 2023. The demand for cage-free eggs has outstripped the supply. What does that mean? Cage-free housing was 28% in 2020. They're expecting that to be 70% in 2024. According to the PBS News Hour article from February 2022, the transition has cost billions of dollars to the industry. The point is, it's expensive to create spaces for cage-free birds. Not only that, you have to collect their eggs while letting them move about. In California, the price of a dozen eggs jumped by 103% due to cage-free eggs. In fact, California doesn't have enough cage-free eggs. And according to California Poultry Federation President Bill Matos, California isn't affected by the bird flu yet. So their eggs are more expensive, but they're not affected by the flu? What's going on here? Now, you probably haven't heard a lot about cage-free eggs affecting the price of eggs, because if you read most of the articles on the increased price of eggs, that's kind of like buried in the text a little bit. Most of the articles blame the increase on price on the bird flu. But according to consumer groups, that only represents a 5% decrease in egg production from last year. It is true that 300 flocks have been hit by the avian flu. The prices won't fall until the chicks hatch and grow into egg-laying age. How old is that? Well, according to Perina, they might lay their first egg at 18 weeks. That's roughly four and a half months. A good chicken can produce 250 eggs per year. Our chickens that lay eggs going down a substantial amount? Let's go through it year by year. In 2019, we averaged 403 million egg layers. That was up 3%. We had 8.59 billion table eggs. In 2020, we averaged 391 million egg layers, which equaled about 8.33 billion table eggs. 2021, 392 million, which equaled about 8.38 billion eggs. And that brings us to 2022, where we totaled 374 million, which was 7.83 billion table eggs. Now being down 5% is notable, but it's not exactly exceptional. And furthermore, you can create a new flock in about a half year. Yes, it's expensive to do so. Yes, it takes time. All of this brought me to the counties affected by the bird flu epidemic, which made me think, what states are cage-free? So I got out a marker and I started circling the states that are cage-free. California, Colorado, Massachusetts, Michigan, Nevada, Oregon, Rhode Island, Utah, Washington, and Arizona. And after circling the states that I knew were cage-free, I wondered if there could be a correlation. Is it possible that after being in a cage for a long time, the birds that were let loose to mingle out in the wilderness with other birds caught some kind of contagion from being with the other birds? Kind of like someone that's stuck in home for a long period of time and then wanders out to deal with other people? I'm digressing. I circled those states because I thought I was on to something, and I was not. I realized after I circled the states that there were still a lot of states where the avian flu was hitting hard, like Iowa, Wisconsin, Nebraska. Moreover, I knew from the articles that I had read that the California egg industry was supposed to be somewhat unaffected by the bird flu, and yet there's areas that are affected there. And that's when I realized that the avian flu doesn't just affect chicken laying birds, but it affects all kinds of flocks. Remember when I said I thought I was on to something? I was not. I downloaded the chart from the USDA and I excluded everything except for the table egg layers. Those were the chickens that I was interested in. I created a chart and you'll notice that there were about four times as many birds with avian flu in caged flocks as there are in uncaged flocks. 
which means, if anything, the caged birds are overrepresented, albeit slightly, due to the ratio of caged birds to uncaged flocks. What does all of this mean? First, if you live in California, the price of your eggs is partially due to the cage-free egg law. Yeah, it's going to be more expensive to raise chickens in a cage-free environment. California can't produce the amount of eggs it's consuming, which means it's probably getting eggs from other states. Only the egg production as a whole of the country is down about 5%, possibly from the switch to cage-free eggs in several states, but also due to avian flu. To make matters worse, Americans are apparently eating more eggs. More eggs than ever. The good news is, from everything that I've read, this should be a self-correcting problem within the next half year because that's all it takes in order to raise a new flock. Don't get me wrong, it's going to cost a lot of money because you basically have, for six months, chickens that you're raising without actually getting any eggs from them. But after that, well, prices should start going down again as long as the avian flu is isolated. We'll see what happens with that. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it was informative. If it was, please comment below. Please subscribe. Check out my other videos. I explain other things. I have a lot of time on my hands. Thanks.